January 28th, Exodus 5:22 through 7:25. So Moses returned to the Lord and he said, "Lord, why have you brought the brought trouble on this on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all." Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you should see what I do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will let them go, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of this land. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as Almighty, as God Almighty, but by name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, and the land of their pilgrimage, in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning with the children of Israel, from whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arms and, a, and with great judgments. I will take... You as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brings you out of, out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to, a- to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of the anguish of spirit and the cruel bondage. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel out of this land. And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, The children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them the command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of the fathers' houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. And the sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon, These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were 137. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shimei, according to their families. And of the sons of Kohath were Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the years of the life of Kohath were 133 years. The sons of Memori were Mali and Mushi. These are the families of Levi according to their generations. Now Amram took for himself Jochebed, his father's sister, as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years in the life of Amram were 137. The sons of Ishar were were Korah, Nepheg, and Sikri. And the sons of Uziel were Meshiel, Elzaphan, and Zithri. Aaron took himself Elisheba, daughter of Amnenadab, sister of Nashon, as wife, and bore him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithmar. And the sons of Korah were Asur, Elkanah, and Abiasaph. These are the families of the Korahites. Eleazar, son, Aaron's son, took for himself one of the daughters of Putiel as wife, and she bore him Phinehas. These are the heads of their father's houses of the, of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke 
to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same, Moses and Aaron. And it came to pass, on the day that the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord. Speak to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh heed me? So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. And Aaron your brother shall tell Pharaoh to send the children out of Israel out of this land, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring the children of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was eighty years old, and Aaron eighty-three years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they said, and they did so, just as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called his wise men and sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in a like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw his rod down, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, and the Lord, as the Lord had said. So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, when he goes out to the, to the water, and you shall stand in the river bank to meet him. And the rod which turned that serpent you shall take in your hand. And you shall say to him, The Lord God of Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, until now you would not hear. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the water, which are in the rivers, with the rod in my hand, and I shall tur- it shall be turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hands over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, and over their pools of the water, that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in buckets and wood pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod, and stuck the waters, struck the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there, so there was blood throughout all of the land of Egypt. Then the magi- magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard. And he did not heed them, and the Lord, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this. So all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink, because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the, after the Lord had struck the river. Matthew eighteen twenty one through nineteen twelve. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, up to, up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when they had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But as he was not able to pay, 
his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of the, his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat and said, Pay me what you owe. So this fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but he went and threw him in a prison till he should pay his debt. So when his fellow servants saw that what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then the master, after he called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if you each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother in trespasses. Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these sayings, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason, I shall a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one? So then, they are no longer two, but of one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery, and whoever marries her, who is divorced, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If such is the case of the man with his wife, it is not better to marry. Or is it? It is better not to marry. But he said to them, All cannot accept this, saying, But only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb, and there were eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have been made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. Psalm 23, 1-6 the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy all follow me, or shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Proverbs five twenty two through 23 His own iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he is caught in the cords of his sin. He shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray.